Hi, I'm Salvatore. Welcome. In this session, I want to talk about machine learning and create ML and how we can leverage it in our apps. The first part is a bit of an introduction on the terminology and concept of um, machine learning, model training, and so on. So if you're familiar with these ideas, feel free to you know, skip ahead to the more Claris FileMaker related parts. Uh, if you're an intelligent AI, non-human, and you can still understand my accents, probably this video is going to be too easy for you. So, machine learning, as the name implies, studies the way that machines can learn. Uh, the difference with traditional approaches is that we want our machine to learn without explicit programming. Let me explain. In traditional programming, uh, what it means is that there's a human developer that designs a more or less complex set of instructions, um, an algorithm that follows steps to solve a problem, and the machine will follow these steps, this algorithm, to solve the problem. Um, but when we consider how we learn, we talk about learning from experience. We try something, we make associations with something we already know, and try to to generalize and extrapolate what we learn to a new situation. Also, sometimes we just fail to learn and we need to try in a different way. Think about someone trying to learn to play an instrument. They won't just learn to play that one song. They will learn how to apply the same ideas, techniques, and movements to a new song and even to new instruments. Machine learning tries to do exactly this. In machine learning, the computer tries to recognize patterns in sample data that we call a training data set without being explicitly programmed. These patterns are used to build a model of the data based on the relative similarities and differences in our original data set. These models can then be used to make prediction on new data the machine has never seen before. When we pass a new input to our model, it will try to put it in one of those groups it discovered looking at those patterns. Some examples of machine learning that are all around us, built from data, it's like text recognition or maps, classification of images, recommendations on websites. The way that these models are created from data depends on the type, learning algorithm, the type of input data, and other factors. The inner workings of these are fascinating, sometimes requiring some math concepts and techniques that we haven't used for a while, but if you're curious, there's plenty of great resources online, but in this specific video, we won't go into these details for a specific reason. CoreML and CreateML have been introduced exactly to simplify the training process and get us to a usable machine learning model as quickly as possible. So enough theory for now, let's see how these ideas apply to our Claris ecosystem. At WWDC in 2017, Apple introduced a new framework for machine learning called CoreML. It meant that for the first time, we had a native way to leverage existing machine learning models directly on device in apps developed through Xcode. The Claris FileMaker platform introduced functionalities that can use these same pre-trained models without going through Xcode, just with a container and a simple script call so we can practically drag and drop artificial intelligence to our Claris apps. To test these functionalities, we can look at the Apple website. Apple has a page that lists some popular open source pre-trained model that we can visit. There's other resources online, like a GitHub list of CoreML models, as well as converters from other machine learning frameworks to the CoreML format. If we look at this page, it shows a brief description of what the model has been trained to do. And if we click, we have a link to the original source and sometimes to the original paper that was behind the model, as well as the download link, of course. To test, I want to use this mobile v net v2 model. It's a well-known model trying to recognize the main subject in a photo. Let's download it quickly. And let's move to our Claris FileMaker app. This app is just a modified version of the Content Manager started solution, adapted for this demo. It's just two container fields and a text field. 
If you want to copy, get in touch on the Claris community, but it's pretty simple to do. The first thing we want to do, we want to add our model. It's just a single ML model file that we just downloaded. Once the file is in the container, we want to load it in memory. It's a single script tab to load it in memory, which we'll see in details. Now that the model is loaded, we can start passing the images. Let's start with this one. All right, so the model has computed it, and it says that with 70% confidence, that's an upright piano. Of course, if you keep going down the list, you can see that for instance, with 0.1% uh, confidence, it says that's a centipede, but that's way down the list, so it's actually pretty accurate. Let's try another one. All right, with 67% confidence, that's an owl. Pretty good. Let's try this one. All right, so 65% almost, that's a cat. There's no mention of the butterfly, but remember, this model has been uh, trained to recognize the main subject in a photo. I want to try just one more. 30% American alligator. What happened there? So these models are really powerful and they've been trained with lots of data, but they're generally nature. The real power comes when we can train our own model using our own project-specific data. So things became really interesting at WWDC in 2018 when Apple announced CreateML, which is a tool that allows us to create and train our own models. So let's have a look at the CreateML app. Before macOS Catalina, it was possible to run CreateML as a Swift playground, just a couple of lines of codes in Xcode. But starting with Xcode 11.3, it's a tool we can just run with no coding whatsoever. You can access it from up here, Xcode, Open Developer Tool, Create ML. It asks us what projects we want to open. We can say for now it's a new document. Create ML shows us the different type of model it can train. Depending on the type of input and output we want, CreateML will optimize things behind the scenes for this model. For this example, we are going to train an image classifier. So we click Next, and we choose a name for our project. This silly name will make sense in a second. We click Next, and we just choose where we want to save our model. And this is the screen that is presented to us. Um, as we discussed, we need a training data set to start. Um, this will be the data set that either we collect from a project or that the client gives us. Um, the data set I want to use in this example comes from a website called Kaggle, which is um, a platform for exploring and sharing data science and uh, machine learning in general. Very interesting. Um, the data set that I found is called Green Finder. Um, it's quite a large one, it's 94,000 images. Um, and at the bottom of the page, you can see the acknowledgments for the creator and the authors of, of this data set. Um, for demo's sake, I'm not going to use the full data set, but just a very small subset. It's three classes with around 100 images each. So going back to Coromel, we Select our data set here. There's about 156 um, images in the data set, and we just click on train up here. Um, it's going to take about 30 seconds. Um, while it does that, I want to highlight there's a, a key difference between the theory of machine learning that we discussed at the beginning and what we are doing right now. Right now, we are telling create a mail how to group the inputs. We gave it the classes in the name of the folders. This is called supervised training, supervised learning. It's just one of the ways that we can do 
a training of a model. Okay, it's finished. Uh, we can see there some statistics. They're more meaningful when there's a bit more data, but we're going to come back to precision and recall. Uh, but what I want to show you right now is how to quickly test our model. If we click on the output tab here, we can drag and drop files uh, in this area or use the little plus button to add files from a folder. But what I like is that we can use the continuity camera to just take a photo with my phone. And I might just happen to have random fruit here on my desk. So if I use this, it tells me that uh, you know, the model recognizes that as an rendering with 100% confidence. Let's try one more. If I take another photo, recognizes that as an apple with 100% confidence. Let's test one more. Last one, I promise. So if we take a, this picture here, and we use it, it tells me that in a 87% confidence that's a banana. Despite what we think about that photo, uh, why that happened? Well, it happened because um, we trained our model to match uh, any input in one of those three uh, buckets, in one of those three classes. So anything outside of those classes will still be matched to whatever the model thinks is the closest one. Um, we really need to think about this, um, despite the silly photo, uh, when we pick our training data set and our classes. It's possible we are not happy with the final result of our model. We either want to integrate some different data or tweak the parameters we can control in CreateML, like these ones down here. And we can do that by adding new sources, or we can modify this data source by duplicating it and then tweaking these parameters. But how can we tell if we are happy or not with the data model? Um, well, the metrics tab up here gives us a first feedback about that. Training shows us how well our model fits the training data set. So if I take an image from the data set, how likely is this image to be put in the right group? Um, validation, it's similar indication, but it is done with a smaller data set that was not used for training, so the model does not know this image yet. If we don't specify a validation data set, CreateML puts aside roughly 10% of the training data set to be used for this. The testing metric that we don't see there, it's an indication of how well our model fits real-world new data. Similarly to what we did by hand with the camera, we can, use, we can use a large folder of test data and run it all at once through the model and have summarized statistic of how the model did. Going a bit more in detail, what do this precision and recall measures tell us about our model? To discuss precision and recall, let's do a quick example. Let's say our model, it's a spam filter which needs to flag only the spam messages like this one, and let's through the non-spam one. We run our filter on our emails, and it split data between spam or not. How well did it do? Well, it flagged some of the real spam, and it let through most of the good emails. But it also flagged good emails as spam. Think about the feedback that your client sent you on Friday and you never saw. We call this false positives. Also, he left through uh, emails about wonderful investment opportunities that we shouldn't miss. Um, this should have been flagged as spam, and we call this false negatives. Precision is defined as the percentage of true positives among all the results flagged as positives, both correct and incorrect. It's an indication of how useful the results are. In this case, 58% of the flagged emails are spam, but not all of them. Recall is the percentage of true positives among all the results that should have been positives. In this case, 7 out of 10 are real spam, but 3 spam went through. It's an indication of how complete the result is. 
So now we have trained, test, and refined our models, and we understand how they work. It's time to see what happens behind the scenes in Cloud's file maker. If I make this application smaller, if I click on the output box here, I can just drag and drop this file into a container in Cloud's file maker. That's pretty much it, a drag and drop to put a machine learning model in a Cloud's file maker app. But how do we interact with it? First of all, we have to load the model in memory. Some of these models can be quite big, so to be able to load and unload them when we need is pretty important. We use the configure machine learning model script step. Let's have a look. It takes three parameters. The operation that we want to use, that can be vision, unload, or general. Pretty self-explanatory, but vision is about processing images. General is about processing scalar inputs, so parameter name, value, parameter name, value. And unload is to free up that memory. Second parameter is the name of the model, which is important because it will be used to call this model when we need it. And the third parameter is the container where the model comes from. So once the model is loaded in memory, we can just pass it an input and see what happens. Okay, so how does the result uh, come out. Uh, it's evaluating the calculation engine using a function called compute model. If we have a look at it, we need to specify what model we're going to use and the input. In this specific case, in the case of a vision model, we always use the keyword image and then we pass the container that contains um, the input. In the, in the case of a um, general model, we will have parameter name, parameter value, parameter name, parameter value. There are though two additional parameters that we can use down here. One is called confidence lower limit and one is called return at least one. At the time of this recording, the L page of Claris shows the first parameter called as threshold, but it won't work if you use that keyword. You have to use confidence lower limit. This parameter tells the model not to bother sending back uh, results with a confidence level that is too low, in this case, under 10%. Return at least one tells the model, well, if you really can't find anything with enough confidence, just send me the best you can. So if I run this version of the script, this version of the function, here we can see that everything will be filtered out except for Mandarin. If I use a slightly different input like this apple here, um, it's an apple with 83% confidence or a Mandarin with 16%. So if I run this modified version with the extra two parameter again, it will filter out the banana um, option. As you can see, um, the result is returned as a JSON. So we will normally just parse out the information and use it for whatever we want to use it. In this case, I just added format element for visibility. To expand on all the concepts we've seen so far, I want to show you a little project I created for fun. I can train a model to recognize subjects from an image, like we did before, and my kids are mad about Pokemon. Characters in the animation use this device called a Pokedex. It's a small handheld device that can point at a Pokemon to get instant information. So here on the left, I wanted to create a real life Pokedex for them to use on a mobile device. This is a simple Claris FileMaker app with two layouts and three scripts. I'll give you a simple demo. First of all, the model is stored in a container as usual, and it's loaded by a script on first window open, so we don't have to press a button. I'm running this on Claris FileMaker Pro, so I won't use the camera right now, but just insert an image. Pick an image and then just press this question mark button. The model returns the name of the creature it has identified, and the name is used to find the related statistic via a little API. Just, let's see one more example. And again, has identified the character, 
uh, returns the name and the name is used for the API. To create this model, let me close this. To create this model, I found my training set again on the Kaggle website. The images and names are copyrighted, of course, so I won't be distributing this model. I created it following the exact steps we discussed earlier. This we see here are the stats. As you can see here on the left, I did a bit of tweaking to optimize, and in the end, I settled on this one. So I had almost 11,000 images categorized in folders, and as you can see, the training measure is great. If we go even the details, you can see for every category, the measure is pretty high, but not the validation one. So why is that? Well, it depends on the quality of my initial categorized data. Images were sometimes of low quality, some were categorized in the wrong folder, and some were not you know, official images. Some were fan art, silhouettes, some were coming from video games. So create ML when the extra mile to try and fit all these inputs, which in turn made the model a bit more confused when it comes to test new data that it doesn't know. So the quantity of training images is of course very important to build a comprehensive model, but the quality of our training set is paramount. We want to choose a training set fit for the final goal of our model not just the biggest one that we can find. All the examples we saw until now are about vision models, image classifiers. Vision models are intuitive and straightforward to explain and take a single input, so they're easy to demo. But when we start looking around us, there are some machine learning models we interact with every day, and those have nothing to do with images. I've trained some models in CreateML to explore other common types. I want to show you a recommender model. What's a recommender? This type of model takes a list of rankings, of preferences, of things we like, and returns some suggestions. Your favorite music app has a recommender system. Your favorite podcast app has one. Your favorite online marketplace definitely has one. When you click on that video for a quick break, and two hours later, you're still watching videos, you are interacting with the recommender model, just following it. The one I have here, let me open it, has been trained to suggest new board games the user would like based on user preferences with other board games. It was trained using a data set of 10 million reviews from a website called Board Game Geek. The model trained to recognize trends. User one likes 10 specific games, user two likes eight specific games and so on. Means that when we submit a new user preference, the model will build on this experience and follow this pattern of association to suggest new things. Let's have a quick look at the measures. They look a bit different from the vision one, from the classifier one that we saw before. What does precision at K mean? Well, K is the number of top recommendation returns, so the best one, the top two, the top five. So how many of these K recommendations are relevant to the user is defined as precision of K. It's an important metric, but in CreateML, it's a bit hard to read as we can't explicitly define what relevant means. It could be that we suggest to a user a game that's like very high in the training set, but we just can't define what this very high means. So despite the fact that a precision of 20 looks pretty low, let's test our model. I can create a new test user here. And if I choose three games and I start giving various scores to them, we can see that on the right hand side, the suggestion keep evolving. Of course, if you know the games that I'm adding now, they are similar in nature, and it looks like the suggestions on the right hand side are also similar type of games. Despite the fact that that makes sense to us, that is not really what the model is looking for. The model doesn't know what these games are about. 
it just knows the user that likes those games also likes the other ones. If I if I try to completely change the type of preference game that this user likes, and you know I make a very high score for this one, and I lower my score for these ones. You can see that some of the games that appear before disappear and other come in. Again, this is not related to the type of game, just about the overall user preferences that create the experience of our model. Like we did for precision and recall, let's clarify the idea of precision at K with an example. What we see here is a table that for four recommendation returned, so k equals four, shows us the games the model suggested and the actual rating a user gave them in the training data set. We said before that precision at k is defined as the number of relevant recommendations divided by k. So let's decide that for us, a relevant recommendation is one the user has scored at least 3.5. To find our relevant suggestions, we sort by decreasing actual rating. Only game four and game two were actually relevant to the user by our definition of relevant, while the others scored a bit high on the model compared to the user. So our precision at k equals four, it's two out of four, 50%. The last type of model I want to explore with you is a text classifier. Similarly to what we do with our vision model with images, a text classifier is trained with text grouped in classes. The model tries to understand a pattern common to the text in each class. I have an example here. I wanted to create an automated sentiment analysis. It tries to classify text into positive or negative. It can be applied to things like product reviews, video comments, tweets, to train it, I've used 50,000 movie reviews from IMDb. They are not the ideal training data set as sometimes they're just long detailed description of part of the movies that the user liked or didn't like, but they do an okay job. As you can see, precision and recall are pretty high both for the training and the validation data set. So if we try a couple of test sentences and I write there, latest product was great, the prediction sentiment is positive. But if I update the sentence and say, the one before was terrible, the overall sentiment of the sentence is updated to negative. So if you remember what we said in Clarice FileMaker, for general models, we need to know how to name the parameters. A good way to have a look at the parameters is once we have exported our ML model file, to double click and an Xcode window appears and shows us some information, including the name of the parameters. So if we jump back into Claris FileMaker and we look at this script for a general model, we can see that I can use the text parameter that I just learned from my model and pass something. Now for a quick test, I've already preloaded this uh, model. So if I just write the new board game is amazing and I click out, the label is positive. I couldn't find a way to show you what I want to say now on a slide, so I'm back. That concludes our exploration of machine learning, CreateML, and the related functionalities in the Claris FileMaker platform. Hopefully you enjoyed it and discovered some new things along the way. If you leave this presentation curious about the functionalities and the things that you can achieve with them, I've succeeded in what I wanted to show you. Our client needs evolve all the time, and machine learning is another great tool we can use to help them. Where do we go from here? What, what happens next? 
there's plenty of resources online about CreateML and machine learning. Also, some members of the Claris community have been very active about it. People like Wim de Court, Chris Polite, or in Europe, David Julot and Douglas Wallace all have articles and videos about it. So stay curious, have fun with it, and share your amazing model with the Claris community. Bye.